In World War II, a group of mostly African-American airmen uh, made up the 332nd Fighter Group and the 447th Bombardment Group of the U.S. Army Air Force. Now, I say mostly African-American because upon, like, researching this episode, I guess there was one white dude in the bunch, but for the most part, like, it was essentially an all-black group of warfighters that were total badasses. And these badasses were known as the Tuskegee Airmen. Now here in the office today, we have a watch celebrating those American heroes. And yeah, it, it's from uh, like, who else would make this watch? Uh, it's an aviation themed watch when we're thinking of planes, when we're thinking of paying homage to pilots in planes, aviate, right? It's so on the nose for aviate. And right off the bat, I wanna say uh, proceeds from the sale of this watch are actually going to support the Tuskegee Airmen Incorporated, uh, which is helping preserve the legacy of these heroes. So it's a very, very nice gesture from Aviate, and it's cool that they've kind of uh, done the celebration piece and are actually helping uh, the people that they are celebrating. It is 12.14 p.m., let's get down to business. <laughs> Now this AV-8 Tuskegee Airmen is a variation of their P-51 Mustang series of watches. Now, just like the name implies, this is an homage to the P-51 Mustang World War II fighter plane, which is actually one of my favorites ever since I was a little, along with the Corsair, with the P-61 Black Widow, and with the B-17 Flying Fortress. Like those four planes I was obsessed with. I made models of them with my dad. Um, yeah, and then modern day, you know, well, not so, oh God, I'm old. The F-14 Tomcat, they don't even, they don't use that anymore. Luckily, my favorite plane of all time is actually still in use. The A-10 Warthog, baby. Woo! In fact, guys, actually comment below What's your favorite plane? You know, military plane or not, but we're talking about military planes. So yeah, what's your favorite military plane? If any of you pick a Messerschmitt, I am banning you. Okay, back to the watch. I have the spec sheet in my hands here. Um, the movement is a Japan Mecha Quartz chronograph. So this is uh, most likely a Seiko. It doesn't specify on the spec sheet, but I'm gonna assume it's a Seiko Mecha Quartz. Uh, stainless steel case. 43 millimeter diameter, the thickness is 13 millimeters, and the lug to lug is 51 millimeters. So a little bit over my personal limit, but we're gonna talk about the pros and cons, so I'll wait for that. You're getting a mineral lens with AR coating. You're getting applied indexes with Super Luminova. The lug width is 22 millimeters, so a little bit wide there. And you're getting a five atmosphere water resistance rating. Now this is an interesting design from AV8. And AV8, you know, regularly comes out with more interestingly designed watches. Um, but yeah, before I go any further, let's talk about the pros and cons. The pros would be really nice brushed grains on the dial surfaces. Like you move it along in the light, it's very dynamic and really nice finishing on a very dynamic dial. Speaking of that dial, uh, the sub the, the the registers, the sub dials, are really cool like takes on a gauge cluster that you might find in a plane. So I really like the screws kind of bolting down the gauge cluster. It's just very, again, like aeronautical. I, I, I appreciate that. I like the integrated crown guard and how it goes kind of very uh, smoothly into these very unique pushers for the chronograph. Uh, and the pushers have a very nice uh, tactile click to them. And the final pro, you know, very subjective. This is probably one of the more tasteful, in my opinion, releases from AV8. And this is probably one of my favorite releases from AV8. And I've reviewed a couple here on the channel already. Now to the cons. While the handset has very vibrant loom, the other dial markers, incredibly dim. The next con would be, I think myself and, and probably all my viewers would prefer a sapphire crystal. Next con is the offset date, not my thing. And the final con, which is a, a huge, 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 people are gonna complain about me complaining about this, but there's no drilled lugs. Guys, I just prefer drilled lugs. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, he can't keep getting away with this. All in all, good and bad, I've got to say this is an awesome piece that celebrates some truly awesome American heroes, and I really do appreciate that Aviate uh, is actually taking proceeds to support uh, the legacy of these heroes. So it's not just like using their name and slapping it on something so they can make money. 
they're using their name and they're selling these products, but they're actually using the proceeds to help the heroes. So I, I, I really do like that. And um, I think it's a, a great gesture from a very interesting watchmaker. But let me know what you think, guys. What do you think about this watch? Is this one that you agree is kind of more tasteful, more interesting than the others? Or do you think this is, you know, just still too out there for you? Leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and check out the information in the description below. I'll leave a link to AV8, and I appreciate them sending the watch to the office. All right, guys, I will catch you on the next one. Like, comment, and subscribe. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. And always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Bada bing bada boom, Mr. Worldwide wanna step in the room.